And uh, one key element of this uh, new country that was created out of nowhere, which never existed before, was that they were not anti-Semitic. The founder of the George Washington, if you will, of Czechoslovakia was a guy named Professor Masaryk. And he was a famous friend of the Jewish people. As a matter of fact, to be perfectly honest, he was not, he was, he was not a friend of the Jewish people. He just said, I believe we're treating him fair. They didn't give them anything. They just refused, or he refused to allow any discrimination. They didn't privilege the Jews. They just didn't go along with what all the other countries did. And uh, my mother always used to tell the story that the Jews in Czechoslovakia all knew that when the country was first founded, there were all over Eastern Europe pogroms everywhere because when uh, we had in Baltimore, Maryland, you know, when, when the police aren't there, when the crime, the crime uh, shoots up and you have riots. And that's what happened over there when the end of the First World War in all these countries. And in Poland and in Hungary and Romania and all these other countries, there were huge riots and pogroms and the looting of stores and beating and killing and raping and all this sort of thing all over the place. And the governments didn't do anything about it, whether it was in Ukraine or Poland or Romania or even Hungary. And uh, in Czechoslovakia, there was one town that started it. And um, Masaryk, who was the president, said that I consider what you've done to be a, uh, a blot on our record, and I will never visit your town, and I consider what you did to be uh, like a big of era. And they put him, he declared a moral quarantine. And what's the point? The point is, if you exercise leadership, then it makes a message. He said, if you're willing to take a stand, then your own people will respect you. Even the anti-Semites uh, quieted down and shut up and uh, pulled back. And so when my mother was growing up after the age of six in uh, what is it, uh, school and high school and afterwards, she actually lived in a very democratic and, and, uh, and liberal environment. Money was a problem, but not discrimination and anti-Semitism. And the Czechs really uh, in the 1920s and 30s did make a big effort to play fair with the Jews. Um, when my mother went to uh, school, it was uh, high school, or maybe it was right afterwards when she went to business school, we call her secretarial academy. Uh, she had occasions where uh, you know, she didn't want to come take a test because in Eastern Europe, the uh, once they set up the new countries, especially an enlightened country like Czechoslovakia, the first thing they passed was a public school law, which was everybody has to go to school, which you never had before under the old regimes. Once everybody has to go to school, that means you have to go to public school, it means you have to go on Saturday. Well, in a town like Bardi, where they all Hasidim, they basically went to the uh, mayor or the head of the school commission or something like that, and they said, uh, we go to school, but, you know, not Saturday. And I said, no, you have to go on Saturday and all that. And uh, they said, we're not going on Saturday. And he said, well, then you all get in trouble. And they had to appeal over his head to the uh, Czech guy, who was the district supervisor, you know, the, you might say the head of the whole, not the Baltimore chairman of the school board, but the Maryland chairman of the school board, if you follow. And he said, no, if it's a religious issue, then let him alone. And the Slovaks couldn't stand it. Because they were more like the Poles and the uh, Romanians, the Hungarians. They said, you know, why are you letting the Jews get off? And he said, the fair is fair. And my mother herself one time had a high school teacher. <coughs> she had to take a mathematics test of some kind or another. And I think it was a Yontif or whatever. And the teacher, who was from the old regime, uh, he said, you have to take it, you know, on Yontif, you know, on whatever the day is. So she said, I can't do it. And uh, he said, well, you, uh, you have to. If you, if you can't do it, then, then, uh, then he said, fine. But then he gave her a bad grade. And she took it to the principal, who was also a Czech fellow. And uh, the principal said, you know, he didn't, he didn't make any comment, but he said, oh, you know, talk to me in a couple of days. Came back in a couple of days, and he said, uh, you, there were unusual circumstances. You'll have a retest uh, of, a, of a committee of three, me and this guy and another, and another fellow also. And, uh, and that's what they did, you know, after Yontif. And, uh, you know, they asked her all these oral questions, and she got this one right, this one right, and then there was one that was, uh, you know, questionable. And the anti-Semitic fellow said, I guess, this, this answer is not satisfactory. It could be done better. And the other two basically said, I guess, it's perfectly fine she pays and leave her alone. <laughs> yeah? which, which this didn't happen in other countries. When uh, she graduated, uh, when she was in high school, I think, or right after high school, and she had this, uh, as I said before, she went to what they call in German the Handels Academy, which means where a business high school where you learn uh, to be, you can come out with a degree that you can be a, a professional, you know, a high-level secretary executive secretary, something like that. 
and uh,